This week on Healthy Living, we look at the pros and cons of medical cannabis. Activists in Namibia push for the legalization of medical marijuana, and Kenyan psychiatrist Dr. Mwinga Chokwe discusses the benefits and challenges of medical marijuana. Plus, in Ion Outbreak, Cameroon kicks off a routine immunization against malaria, while Zimbabwe rolls out a vaccination campaign to curb a deadly spread of cholera. These stories and more in this edition of Healthy Living. Hello, I'm Lina Khmudu. Thank you for joining us on Healthy Living. Tonight we delve into a topic that has sparked intense debates and discussions across the globe, medicinal marijuana. It refers to the use of the cannabis plant or its chemicals such as cannabinoids for medical purposes. According to the World Health Organization, several studies show the therapeutic effects of cannabinoids for a variety of medical conditions, including nausea and vomiting in the advanced stages of illnesses such as cancer and AIDS. Some African countries have legalized cannabis for specific use, including Lesotho, Zimbabwe, South Africa, and Rwanda. In Namibia, marijuana trade is illegal, and punishment can include a fine and imprisonment. But some who suffer from a medical condition want the government to decriminalize the use of marijuana or cannabis, citing studies that have shown its possible benefits. Vitalio Angula has this report from Shwakopmon, Namibia. Rena Kring suffers from a debilitating motor neuron disease, a condition that damages parts of the nervous system, limiting his ability to move around and speak. Kring's condition is a result of a sports injury. Now in his 60s, Kring moves around with the use of a stroller and has speech impairment, making it hard to express himself. Cheryl Green is a soccer moon-based herbalist who grows various plants in her backyard garden. Four years ago, she was arrested for dealing in marijuana. She was found guilty of illegally possessing cannabis oil which she says was used to treat her partner's condition. Green says although she had a very bad experience with her arrest and trial, she continues to advocate for the benefits of medicinal marijuana, calling on the government to change laws that prohibit its use. Cannabis is phenomenal with all kinds of diseases. Like everything you can think of. I'm trying to think of something it doesn't heal. I don't think there is anything. It's a fantastic fantastic herb and yeah I'm, I'm not happy that I can't grow it and use it I could have helped thousands of people already on the possible decriminalization of medicinal marijuana the government says it is considering the matter but has cited the abuse of marijuana and other drugs in the country as a reason why the herb should remain illegal although there are people who use marijuana for recreational purposes Others, like Kring, say they use it to alleviate symptoms of ailments such as motor neuron disease. I have to stop working every day because of the disability. So, medical purposes, absolutely yes. Richard Metcalfe, a human rights lawyer, represented Green during her trial. He says Namibia lags behind other progressive African countries such as South Africa that have decriminalized the use of cannabis. No, I just think that it's time that uh, we start needing to keep pace with developments in the rest of the world mm -hmm. and that we utilize products which we're able to grow and grow naturally and they're not pharmaceutical products, mm -hmm. um, that we utilize them and we utilize the knowledge that Africans specifically have. Namibia's Prime Minister, Sara Kowangerwa Amadila, who led the task force to investigate the medical benefits associated with marijuana, told VOA that the cabinet considered the request for decriminalizing marijuana on the basis of presumed benefits. However, the cabinet chose not to. Human rights lawyer Metcalfe says the law can only be changed by parliament. Vitalio Angula, 
VOA News, Swakopmund, Namibia. Dr. Mwinga Chokwe is a psychiatrist and a mental health consultant in Nairobi, Kenya. He discusses some health benefits and challenges of medical marijuana. The issue of uh, marijuana and or cannabis is is as old as the as history itself or as man himself. Cannabis had had been used a long time uh, freely in the villages and so on, but later on. It was prohibited, it became a prohibited drug. Uh, and that made, made the complication that it was now not possible for you to study it medically or clinically or scientifically. There's an aspect that brings psychosis, but there's an aspect which is harmless. It's called a ca cannabino. And they have discovered that uh, there is in fact a system within the, the human body with the sensors for uh, for cannabinoid kind of uh, you know reagents, especially in the body, it's very good for chronic diseases, chronic disorders, uh, things like uh, rheumatoid arthritis, even fits. There's some children who have responded very well on that for fits. If you want to take one with that uh, THC. Obviously, there is a psychosis, but if you take the medical cannabino, uh, it's rare to get the side effect. Although sometimes it may develop a situation where, you, where you, when there is excessive vomiting, hyperemesis, and that can cause the, the dehydration, dehydration and renal function. Uh, you know, those are the effects. It can also affect your your memory and your time reaction in case of any emergency. Generally, the cabinet so far, they have been reported to be fairly safe. In Africa and in Kenya, marijuana is illegal in, in, in any form. So unless the government comes and uh, changes that, then it will be difficult for us to to investigate and to do research. So uh, this is the challenge that we have, especially in Africa. But Europe, I think they are way ahead and they have gone on and produced capsules from for marijuana, liquids. They have produced sprays you can spray. They even have patches you can put on your skin. So they are actually moving fast and I think it's a question of time. What are your thoughts on cannabis and the legalization of marijuana for medical purposes? Here are some reactions from Nigeria. Uh, I don't think actually it would be good to legalize uh, cannabis like here in Nigeria. People will abuse the drugs, you understand? Because here we are in a country of where we have youths who want to like try things just to like cruise. You hear the things like cruise and people want to like try drugs just for the fun, not for the medical purposes. Like that I think legalizing it here will actually be, do more harm than good. Well, if it's favorable because of the medical purpose, I think it should be legalized in Nigeria. I don't think it's a good idea because um, it's very harmful. Even our brothers and sisters, we have a lot of them taking it and it's um, getting them to do unnecessary things like um, some of them are mad on the streets talking to themselves and the rest. My own opinion is that I think it is possible. I think you can actually find out things that can help people in cannabis. And I think that that is one of the reasons it will, people would push for it to be legalized. If we have like a serious issue about like, people abusing it, we can find alternatives like codeine or cough syrup. People, you know, it's, people said it could be easily abused and we found alternatives for it. I don't think it's um, necessary because it's not legalized yet and it's already everywhere and they are using it already. So legalizing it here in Nigeria, that means you are giving the youth go ahead, like, go crazy. When codeine came, codeine came because of um, cough and other stuff. How did, how did it turn out? They had to like bound it. Now it's not everywhere, but it's good. But they had to bound it because we abuse it. Nana Kwaku Achemang is president of the Empire Association of Ghana. 
He elaborates on the advocacy for the recognition of medical cannabis in the country. I think um, medicinally um, we've discovered now that, um, or it's been revealed now, that cannabis is very good in dealing with uh, a number of ailments. Uh, it deals with all the cancers, the prostrates, breast, throat cancer and the like. It's also good for epilepsy. It's great for autism as well. PTSD, Parkinson's disease. So, you know, it, it has a high efficacy rate when dealing with these ailments. And this is probably the first reason why cannabis should be legalized here in Ghana, because we have a lot of people who are suffering. They're taking opioids and we know that opioids don't deal with the problems at all. Um, it could lead to addiction, which it does. Many patients are addicted to opioids. It is something that absorbs carbon dioxide. And it's, that is very important when you look at the fact that there's a lot of discussion going on now about reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Our climate is perfect for the cultivation of cannabis. And so uh, in other countries where they've already established the industry, one of the things that is not going very well for them is the high costs of the cultivation because they do not have the climate that Ghana benefits from. So, you know, everything is clustered in greenhouses. And of course, that comes with its own costs. You know, costs for dehumidifiers, costs for, you know, lights that, that have got to be on 24 seven and various other costs as well. There are rumors, if you like, about um, that are based around, you know, the use of recreational cannabis leading to psychosis. And we all know that that's, that talk is really all about correlation and not about causation. Well, the Hempire Association of Ghana is an advocacy body. Um, it's a non-governmental organization body. And basically, we've been set up to provide the education that people need to really understand what cannabis is all about. According to research published by the U.S. National Institute of Health, acute effects of cannabis may vary between light and heavy users and can include feelings of intoxication, euphoria, and altered sensory perception. Cameroon just launched the world's first routine vaccine program against malaria. The RTSS vaccine, also known as Muscarix, is being administered through a routine program to children in the Central African country after successful trials of the drug in Ghana, Kenya and Malawi. Nineteen other African countries aim to roll out the vaccines this year, targeting around 6.6 .6 million children in these countries in 2024 and 2025, according to Global Vaccine Alliance, Gavi. Experts say malaria vaccines have been shown to reduce clinical malaria cases by more than half in the year after vaccination. Meanwhile, in Zambia, the government is embarking on a mass vaccination program against cholera. The outbreak began in October and has infected at least 10,400 people. Over 410 people have died, according to the Zambia Public Health Institute. The health ministry says cholera has been detected in nearly half of the country's districts and nine out of ten provinces. Cholera is an acute diarrhea infection caused by bacteria that is typically spread via contaminated food or water. The disease is often linked to poverty and inadequate access to clean water. That's our show for today. For more health news, wellness tips, and medical breakthroughs, stay connected to Voice of America at voaafrica.com. You can follow me on X at Linachmudu. Until next time, stay well and strive to make every day a healthy day.